Well, hello there. Welcome to the video that is called Overriding Methods. Um, there's lots of good terminology that uh, comes up as you learn more and more programming. I find it quite enjoyable. So, Overriding Methods is a technique that we can use when we're using inheritance in programming. And what it allows us to do is really to make more specific versions of methods. Um, so, for example, when we have a vehicle class um, which has a, one, a method like move, for example, um, and then we have a, a car that's a specific version it inherits from or extends the vehicle class, uh, we might want to have a move method that does something a little bit extra. And we'll look at an example of this. Um, but to do that, what we want to do is we want to have a version of move inside our car. And to do that, we would override the version of move that exists in the superclass vehicle. Um, this is going to make more sense with an example. So let's look at an example. <laughs> so what if in our traffic simulation, so we've got our, our traffic simulation here with cars and motorcycles, which both extend the vehicle class. Um, what if we wanted to create a drunk driving kind of uh, situation so that our cars um, should veer around a bit on the y-axis so that they look a bit silly. Um, so I want them to move differently, right? Um, I don't want them to just move linearly uh, from left to right. I want them to wiggle on the y-axis. Um, and if they're going to wiggle on the y-axis, it's possible that they'll kind of go off the top or the bottom of the screen. So I also will need to have them wrap uh, on the y-axis as well. So we know how to do these basic things, right? Like we know how to change the way that something moves uh, and we know how to wrap on the y-axis. But the problem comes or seems to come when we go and look at the car class to start making these changes. Um, because of our very clever use of inheritance, uh, which was a great thing to do, we don't actually have a move and wrap method in the car class. So there's nowhere to add the code to, right? Um, and that's sort of momentarily confusing. There's nowhere to change the way that a car moves. The only place it seems like we can change the way that a car moves would be to change it here in vehicle. But if we do that, it's going to change how a motorcycle moves as well, which is not what we want. And the solution to this is this thing called overriding methods, OK? So it turns out that we can just define those methods that we want to use here in car, move uh, and wrap. That's good. Um, that's a useful thing, right? Uh, obviously, we want to be able to do that. But the other thing that we want to do, however, is we don't want to just waste all of the code that's already in vehicle, right? So for example, in move here for the car, I want to make the car wiggle on the y-axis, but I don't want to rewrite this code here. So I want to use this code that's in vehicle, and I want to have new code um, in, in my car that does something extra. So how are we going to do that? We're going to do it. Uh, in two steps. The first step is I want to add in my new behavior. And my new behavior is that I'm going to veer around on the y-axis. And to be extra fancy, I'm actually going to define a new method in my car called veer. So what's that going to do? Well, um, what am I going to do? How am I going to do this? I, you know what? Let's be even more fancy. A car is going to have another property. It's going to be drunkenness. Is that how you spell drunkenness? Oh dear, that looks... It has the look of drunkenness on my end, uh, but I'm fine, I'm, I'm, I swear. And this is going to determine how often our car kind of veers from side to side. I'm going to make it 0.2, so it's always got a 20% chance of veering. In my veer method, which is new uh, to my car, I'm going to generate a random number because this is how we can do uh, probabilities. And I'm going to check, is that random number less than the drunkenness amount <laughs> that my car has? Uh, and if it is, then I'm going to make my car do this kind of silly veering thing. And I'm going to do that by changing its y velocity. I'm just going to set its y velocity to a random number um, between negative 5 and positive 5. And that's going to cause it sometimes to lurch up or down, right? Um, every 20% of the time, it's going to lurch up or down at some random velocity. So that defines how a car can veer. And this is already interesting, right? Because we're now making the car class even more specific. It's an even more specific kind of vehicle. Uh, because a motorcycle, for example, doesn't have drunkenness. It doesn't have the veer method. It's only the car that has this. Um, so we're making it more specific. Now, now we can get on to actually making this work. So we know that when my car moves, 
it's going to veer, right? So when the car moves, it's going to veer. It's going to call this veer method, which we do by saying this, because right now we are the car, so to speak. We are this car. Call this car's veer method, uh, and that will cause it to move on the y-axis. Now, it's not quite that simple, because if we go and look at the code now, nothing's happening, right? The cars aren't moving. They aren't veering either. They're just doing nothing. They're just sitting there. And the reason for that is that when uh, in the main script over here down the bottom, when we're calling the car.move method, it's going and it's looking in the car class, because we're looking at a car right now, and it's calling the move method, and all the move method does is change uh, the y velocity using veer. Importantly, it doesn't actually add uh, the x and y velocities to the position, uh, because that's something that the vehicle does. So we need a way to do the vehicle's version uh, of move, as well as the specific car version. And to do that, and this is kind of very important when we're overriding methods, because here we have overridden the move method. It means we've overridden the version that was in vehicle with this new version. We often want to still call the superclasses version of that method. And to do that, we return to our friend super. Uh, we used it up in the constructor to call the constructor of our superclass. Uh, it turns out that super is a variable that we can use inside our class to always refer to the superclass part of this thing. So the car, as we know, is partly a vehicle. It's, it's part of what a car is, is defined by the vehicle. And sometimes we want to talk to the vehicle part of the car, the superclass part of the car. We do that with the variable super, which gives us access to the superclass. And so I can call the move method of the superclass, the move method uh, of vehicle, by saying super.move. So here we're saying call this.veer, call this, the veer method inside this class, and also call the move method inside the superclass, right? That will cause the super classes moving stuff to happen as well. And that's good because now we get our veering cars. However, now we've got another problem, right? They went off the side of the screen and disappeared. That is because, again, we've overridden the vehicle's version of wrap with our more specific car version of wrap, but it doesn't do anything. So when it gets called, it just does nothing and has no effect. So we need, again, to fix this. So again, when we're wrapping, we're going to definitely want to do the super version of wrap. So we should say super.wrap to call the vehicle version of wrap, the super class version. That will take care of wrapping uh, on the x-axis, right? So if I return to my program now, the cars veer and they go off the right-hand side. Uh, but they're still going off the top. I said I wanted to wrap on the y as well. So that's the final thing that I'm going to need to fix. And I can fix that in my wrap method within car, because this is a more specific thing that a car does, by checking uh, for the appropriate thing, right? So if this dot y is uh, greater than the height, it went off the bottom, then I should subtract the height from y. And otherwise, if this dot y is less than zero, it went off the top, this dot y should be plus equals height. And that will cause it to pop up the top or the bottom. Uh, from then on. You can see that's happening now in this simulation as these drunk cars uh, veer all over the road. Terrible, terrible driving. Embarrassing. Um, so again, in wrap, we call the super version of wrap by saying super.wrap. That calls the vehicle's version of wrap. That allows us to make sure that our car still behaves in all of the ways that a vehicle should behave. And then we add on our extra stuff that is specific to the car. So now the car is even more specific. It's an even more specific version of a vehicle uh, than it was before. It's more sophisticated now in many ways than a motorcycle, right? Is right Because the motorcycle is really just, it's got some different properties and it's got a different color and that's it. Now the car is starting to like really diverge in its behavior from a motorcycle. And maybe you would want a drunken motorcycle too, in which case you could move this stuff into the vehicle class if everybody can be drunk. Drunken Segway, drunken truck, drunken skateboarder, etc. Okay, um, that's probably, that, honestly, that's probably a good place to, to wind this up, actually. I'll keep this one short. So overriding methods, the idea behind it is we can define a method inside our subclass, like car here, and we can cause it to do something more specific than the superclass, vehicle, such as veering, and we can still use the behavior of the, the superclass, the vehicle, by calling super dot move, calling the super version of the method that we are overriding. So we get the superclasses behavior and the specific behavior of the class that we're actually working in. 
And that just leads again to nicely structured, more efficient, um, and, and, and in many ways easier to understand and maintain uh, code. So I hope that that has, you know, it's, it's one more step along this chain of uh, using uh, inheritance and kind of fully realizing what we can do with object-oriented programming. Uh, this idea of overriding methods to make more specific versions of methods while still maintaining a connection uh, to the superclass. Uh, it's a great piece of uh, programming knowledge. Uh, and with that, I bid you adieu, and I'll see you in the next video.